What's up everybody, JJ here, and today we're checking out the Manta E3EZ control board by Big Tree Tech. This is a new brain for your 3D printer and gives you access to some amazing upgrades that you can't get on those older printers. The E3 part of the name is because of the mounting points are made to fit onto the Ender 3, but it really could fit inside any 3D printer if you print out the right adapter. That's what I've had to do on all my other control board upgrades anyways, and it's really not that hard. First off, let's highlight a few of the specs when it comes to what makes this control board a little bit special. It comes with a new powerful 32-bit 64 megahertz processor, basically just a fast processor that's a bit better than your older boards. A few extra megahertz here or there isn't going to change the performance of your 3D printer, especially if you're using Clipper. This is in their Manta series motherboard, so they've got these connectors to directly mount a CB1 or CM4 controller, which makes setting up Clipper so much easier. They've got these fancy new EZ driver slots. This is basically a new shape and housing for a stepper motor driver. It's a lot of the same stepper motor drivers, and there's several different options. They are really easy to install, and they can only be slotted in in one direction, so you're not going to mess up and put it in backwards. Since they mount vertically and have this big heat sink, it should be way easier to cool them off. Thus, theoretically, you should be able to drive higher currents through it. It's also really nice that it's pre-configured for UART and SPI connections. That way you don't have to mess with tiny screws like you used to on older ones. You can adjust your running current inside of the Clipper config file. It makes it so easy to do. And they're really not that much more expensive, which is kind of the best part. They also do make an adapter, so you could use these on any different boards in the future. It is nice that this board is really configured for both Clipper and Marlin, so you could use either option if you're interested in the future, or you change your mind. If you want to try out Clipper, but you decide it's not really for you, there is still a powerful processor on here, so you could go back to Marlin if you want. You could also connect external screens through the HDMI or SPI connectors. There's large robust capacitors, so you could run the stepper motor drivers at 48 volts if you have an external power supply. That's more for high-end 3D printing, and most people don't need that. There's replaceable fuses on here, which should protect your board just in case you do short out something somewhere on your 3D printer. Hopefully just the fuses will die and it won't kill your entire control board. And there's so many little extra features that you're not gonna find on a stock control board. A stock control board isn't gonna come with extra features that they're not gonna use on their printer, but a third-party control board like this is really trying to overload you with features and give you anything you could want. Extra sensorless homing, auto power off, BL touch, an extra port for addressable RGB NeoPixels, CAN bus connections, so many different controllable fan ports, SPI connections, LCD screen connections. So you can set up and configure a bunch of extra hardware any way you want. Another big reason I really like using Big Tree Tech control boards is because of their instructions and documentations. They have an entire GitHub repository just for this control board, and they have so many things on here. They have a few different STL files to make it fit on a few different printers. So many great documentation pictures showing you the exact schematics. If you're gonna be designing your own mount for this board, this makes it so easy to get it exactly correct. There's also a huge user's manual. This thing is 30 pages and takes you through every single step you could need. Down at the end, when it comes to installation, they've got two different options, one for setting it up with a CB1 and one for setting up with a CM4. And it takes you through every single step you need to do from setting up the operating system, flashing it to an SD card, all the different steps you need. It's so nice. I was gonna step you through these things, but the documentation is already written out so well. You don't really need me for that. They also have two different Clipper config files ready for you. One for if you are using this on an original Ender 3, and then one generic configuration. You do need to go through here and define a few things to make it specific to your printer. Things like build volume, select what type of stepper motor driver you're using, and a few other things you'd need to set up here that makes it specific to your printer. This level of documentation is not something you get from the 3D printer manufacturers. If you look at Creality's website and try to buy a new control board, they give you none of the pinouts, they really don't define much. It's really designed to be put only into an Ender 3, Ender 3 Pro, Ender 3 V2, Ender 5, Ender 5 Pro. It's not designed to be something that can work in multiple printers. It's only made to work in that one printer. Compared to the stock Creality board with only a few plugs on the edge, with this Manta board that's just covered in ports and so much expandability here. So I was initially gonna be putting this board into the Flying Bear Ghost 6 here, but I don't really need to. I was able to get Clipper installed on the stock board, so now I can just control it with the external Sonic pad. That way I can save the E3EZ for a fun DIY build in the future. There are a ton of new, interesting 3D printed 3D printer designs coming out that I'm really looking into at the moment. And I think this would be great for controlling one of those. So in the end, who is this board really for? There's three main reasons why you would need a new control board. 
if you are building a new printer, sure, you would need one. If your old one is broken, then yeah, you would need a new one. Or if you're looking for some of these nice features on here. If you're happy with how your old printer is running and these new features aren't exciting to you, then just keep your old board. If it's working well, then keep working with it. But if you have an older 8-bit board and you really want to upgrade and try Clipper out, this could be a great option since it is a nice integrated package like this. While the normal method of installing Clipper requires you to mount the Raspberry Pi somewhere on the printer, then add extra wires or a USB cable to connect the control board up to the Pi, and there are several different ways to wire it up nicely, but this is a super easy and compact package that kind of does all of that management for you. And I think you should be aware that changing out control boards can be pretty difficult depending on what boards there are on your stock control board. I've used some printers from Anycubic and Creality that use ribbon cables or one big plug to connect up all the wires. This means you'll need to find the pinout of all the wires and correctly crimp them into the JST plugs that the E3EZ board needs. In the box, it comes with the required plugs, but you do need to bring your own crimper to the party and be pretty good at properly crimping things together. It's totally doable if you take your time and really understand what you're doing. Some printers out there are using boards that are using JST plugs, so things would be a little bit easier in that situation, but you will still need to check the pinout diagrams to make sure you don't reverse polarity. That could destroy a fan or any other part of the printer. To be on the safe side, I would go through the pinout diagrams of both boards and just make sure everything is correct. But if you are looking to upgrade, this one does come with a lot of great features at a really good price. The stock board is only $44 right now. That's the same price as buying the stock Creality board. And then you can add on a CB1 and 5EZ2209s for only $77 right now. These things are constantly going on sale, so that price is gonna be fluctuating. So this is really not how I expected this video to end up with the big TreeTech EZ board being over here and the Go 6 also running Clipper. I was able to get it working by manually holding the micro SD card in place just long enough while turning it on and it was able to flash Clipper correctly so now I can control it remotely using the Sonic Pad. So maybe if you have a newer control board and you don't need a bunch of these newer shiny features on there, something like the Sonic Pad or the Big Tree Tech Pad 7 could really be a better upgrade for you if you just want to add Clipper on there and you don't need all these nice advanced features. But I will still be using this printer control board in the next printer that I build and I'm really excited for that. I'm not sure exactly which one it's going to be, but whatever it is, is going to be awesome. I will need to do a follow-up once I actually use it, but this video is pretty much done, so I hope maybe it's helped someone out there see what features are out there. If these things are exciting and you want them on your printer, this is a really great option for you. But if you do have any follow-up questions about this control board or any other control boards for printers, let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to help you out. And while you're down there, if you could hit that like button, it really helps this video out, helps my whole channel out, means so much to me. Then after that, you can go out there and create something amazing today.